Saudamos a We greet everyone with peace of Lord Jesus. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, we're going to stand up. We're going to read the book of Luke. Luke 19. We're going to read from first verse all the way to the ninth verse. From 1 to 9. Luke 19 from verse 1 to 9. Amen. Have you, have you, everyone found? Is here in the projection also. Then Jesus entered and so can you lower the microphone a little bit? Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief of tax collectors. And he was rich, and he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to, to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, May haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourth, fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to his house, because he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Lord, we ask that you bless your word and you bless us once again we pray in the name of jesus amen the church may be seated
or to Jesus. My beloved, Jesus tells a parable, the parable of the rich, of Lazarus, and of Lazarus. He speaks of a, a beggar and a rich man. And they both died. The beggar, the poor, he went to heaven. He went to the woman of Abraham. And the rich, he went to hell. And according to the concept of Judah, every person that prospered was considered a person that was blessed by God. So the richer the person was, the more the person was considered blessed. And Jesus was trying to show through this parable that the blessing of God is not measured in riches for this life. And the trust on this rich man was only on that, on his own earthly riches. And his destination was a life outside of the plan, outside of the project of God. A life uh, after this life of a life of affliction, pain, and suffering. But the Bible speaks, my brethren, that God doesn't choose a person over another. For God, it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. The project of God is for all. So the Bible says that God loved everyone in such a way that He sent His only begotten Son so that whoever believes in Him, doesn't matter whether he's rich or poor, may not perish, but have eternal life. So one of the most difficult things was to save a rich person. Save the poor and needy was easy. The beggar was, was uh, by the side of the road. He knew who Jesus was and he pleaded for to Jesus and the, the crowd prevented him. He called the name of the Lord and the Lord Jesus said, asked him to come and when he came to Jesus he received salvation. When a young person, a young uh, rich man, everyone knows the story of the young rich man that came to Jesus. And at the end of that story, the Lord says that the young man didn't want to let go of the things that he possessed. The Lord said, Jesus said, sell everything that you have and follow me. But he didn't do this because the things of this life for him were more precious than an eternal life in Christ Jesus. So then the disciples came to Jesus and said the following. It is difficult to save a rich person. And Jesus said, it is easier a camel through the hole of a needle rather than a rich to enter into the kingdom of God. So then the disciples got even more confused. So for Jesus, and Jesus said, what is impossible for man is possible for God. So that meeting between Jesus and Zacchaeus was to show to man that he, Jesus, is able to operate on what is impossible. Because he, Jesus, is the God of the impossible. That everything is possible to the one who believes in Jesus. So, my brother, it, this, here it speaks about this impossible salvation, this impossible meeting of this blessing 
which was for Zacchaeus, was impossible to be reached. The Bible said that Jesus was entering into Jericho, but he was entering just to pass through Jericho. And the word says, the word said he was passing through Jericho, but there in Jericho, Jesus had a project. And the project of Jesus there in Jericho was to go after a lost sheep of a son of Abraham. If you read there the parable of the rich and the poor, the rich from, from the bad place and in hell, he goes and tells tell Abraham so he was a son of Abraham he was a son of the promise he, won, he was someone that had the right to the inheritance but how this man was that was lost they had the right to an inheritance that was the son of Abraham, who that man was. The Bible says this name was Zacchaeus because his name is registered. Because Zacchaeus was saved. That's why his name is registered. Zacchaeus was the son of Abraham that was saved by Jesus. The Bible says that he was a leader of the tax collectors. In Brazil, and here in America, no one likes a tax collector. Nobody likes to pay taxes. Who, who does it? And this individual, because of his activity, because he, of his work, he was rejected. He was undesirable. He was suffer. He suffered discrimination. He was prevented from entering to the temple. People didn't want his presence. He was a, an undesirable person. He was rich. So, as a person that we can say that didn't lack anything. The Bible speaks in Ecclesiastes that uh, the money can answer to all things. So he had money to answer to all his actions and attitudes. Zacchaeus was a man that was uh, working for the Roman Empire. He took from the Jews and bring, brought the money to the Romans. And many tax collectors, he was also considered as betrayers of the nation and robbers. Many uh, uh, extort uh, population order to become richer. So Zacchaeus, he was, had all this baggage. That's why everybody repudiated him because he was undesired. The Bible says that the height of Zacchaeus, he was a short person. When we speak about short and short like me, small, so unworthy. Oh, that person is short. He is unworthy. You associate to many things. When somebody went low. So all there were all these problems associated with Zacchaeus. Not because he was all of that, but people looked at him and saw all these bad characteristics, the bad testimony in the life of Zacchaeus. And this would set him apart for from the from the religion, from uh, from the social life with the people. 
And the Bible says, my brethren, that he was trying to see who Jesus was. And there was there was another person, the beggar. He knew who Jesus was. The Bible says the other individual, the the beggar, he was by the side of the road. Zacchaeus, he was not. He was in Jericho. But he didn't know Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus. Jericho was a city that had been condemned since the time of Joshua. So he was under judgment. He was under a condemnation. So he wanted to see who Jesus was. He wanted to meet Jesus. How many don't want that today? To, oh, to be in Jericho. They feel unworthy, undesired. They may, people are raising falsehood against them. They are being persecuted. People are making false accusations against them. They are being mistreated by the people. They are prevented from being in the temple. How many people are in this situation? But they have in their heart the desire to see Jesus, the desire to know Jesus. And it is interesting that when you see Jesus, is that you know what it causes us? It causes us to have salvation. And you know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. When we know Jesus, we are delivered. And that was the desire, the desire to be delivered from all those labels that have been placed upon him. Of all the, those accusations, all the falsehoods that were risen against him. He was tired of being considered an evil and uh, the lowest person. Or being considered unworthy or being set apart from the community and, and living in isolation. That's not what he wanted. And how many people are, are not in the same situation? They are isolated in communities and their environment at work, and, but they don't want to live uh, in a situation like that. There is in, injustice being practiced against them. And he wanted to see Jesus. But he could not see Jesus. The Bible says that he could not see Jesus. He was prevented, prevented from seeing Jesus. And why was he being prevented from seeing Jesus? What prevented him? What prevented Zacchaeus from seeing Jesus? It was the same problem of the, the poor man, the crowd. When the beggar pleaded, the crowd said, shut up. The crowd reproached the poor so he would be quiet. So now, Zacchaeus, he wanted to see Jesus. He was being prevented also by the crowd. My brethren, my brethren, was the same crowd because of the crowd, because of the multitude. There was a multitude of impediments, a multitude of obstacles, a multitude of things that would set him, Zacchaeus, apart from the Lord. Zacchaeus could not go through all those obstacles uh, uh, above or around all, all this multitude. He was a short and a small man, and the multitude was large. How many times are we not in the same situation with a multitude of impediments that would prevent us from knowing the Lord? A multitude of impediments that prevents it from coming to the Lord. Thoughts, actions, labels, problems, difficulties, adversities. It was a multitude. It was a lot of things. But the board, my brethren, says that Zacchaeus, he made a decision. There's a verse in the Bible in which the Lord Jesus, he says that Every man. All the prophets, they lasted until John. And then ever since, it's been proclaimed the kingdom of God. 
him. Every man uses its own strength to enter into this kingdom. But salvation is not through force or, or to violence. Is salvation not through works? It's by grace because by grace is your saves not comes from you, but it, it comes from God, it comes from the Lord. But Jesus says that after when He shows up, when man had to use of force in order to enter the kingdom of God, so that it was needed from the part of Zacchaeus an effort not in order to be saved but in order to be aware of the salvation many times we should not be just uh, comfortable in our with our labels there's with the all the things that may prevent us from coming to the Lord we cannot get used to the situation in which we are of uh, sadness and anguish and depression and feelings have you imagined how the life of Zacchaeus was. It was un undesirable, it was isolated, set apart from everything, without right from anything. And do not take the shape of this world. He was, he didn't uh, uh, agree with the situation in which he was. So he sought a, a different way to see Jesus. Remember the individual, the, the beggar, he, the blind man, he said, Jesus asked, what do you want? I want to see. So then Jesus cured him and saved him. The Bible says, my brother, that he ran ahead. He was, he went in haste. He said, what is interesting about Zacchaeus is the following. That he was on the road uh, like the poor, because the poor was by the side of the road. And he met Jesus. Zacchaeus didn't know Jesus. But he knew. But he knew where Jesus was going to pass by. So when he became aware that Jesus was going to go through that place, through this road, through this avenue, I'm going to be there waiting for him. And the Bible says that he rent uh, ahead and desire the Lord is that man runs and seek his own salvation run to get his redemption for his soul run in order to meet with the Lord Jesus man needs to have haste he ran because he was in haste He was in haste to meet with his salvation, his Savior. He knew where Jesus was going to pass by. Maybe you entered here in the house of the Lord, not knowing Jesus, but with desire to know Jesus, to want to know Jesus. And then he said, I'm going to go to this place because Jesus is going to pass through that. Jesus is, is going to pass through here. So Jesus is passing here in our midst. He's, he has this project in this world in order to bring back and save the one who are lost. To seek and rescue those who are lost. The Bible says, my brother, that Jesus so Ezekiel went ahead and went up into a sycamore tree. A sycamore tree is like a fig tree that does not produce fruit. The, the sycamore tree is a producer of fruit, but it's, it's uh, shapeless, has no good taste, it's maybe undesirable. But the fig tree also represents what? It represents Israel represents the law. And according to the law, we have been condemned. Because by law, we all have sinned and we are destitute from the glory of God. But the law brings us 
conduct us to Christ. So the re resource of Zacchaeus to meet Jesus was to go up in the sycamore tree. So the food for Zacchaeus was undesirable. But was the resource, why? Why was undesirable? Because through the law he was condemned. By the same law, we understand that uh, free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. That for us is impossible for us to be saved. Because the wage for us is death. So when man has this understanding, he goes up on, on the fig tree. He knows that through the law he is condemned. But then, my brethren, comes the grace. The grace has reached him. So went up to the sycamore tree because he knew that Jesus was going to go through there. And when Jesus arrived to that place, he looked up and so saw who? He saw Zacchaeus. He saw the son of Abraham. And he saw the son of promise. He saw the man that has the right to an inheritance and that the crowd was trying to prevent him from receiving this inheritance. So then the Lord looked to Zacchaeus. My brethren, there was a crowd, a multitude. But the eyes of the Lord went up to Zacchaeus, to the one who was in need of the blessing of God. The gaze of the Lord was a gaze of mercy. Jesus, that day, he wanted to bless. He wanted to change the life of Zacchaeus. He wanted to change the destiny of Zacchaeus. He wanted to remove the tears and anguish and the depression of Zacchaeus. In order to give him joy to the heart of Zacchaeus. Because he had many things, but he didn't have one thing. One thing was necessary for Zacchaeus. It was the joy of salvation. It was the joy of being called. Even if the crowd didn't want, even if Jericho has rejected him, if Jericho thought that he was unworthy, because that's what the world does, it rejects, mistreat you, gives a false testimony against you, brings anguish to your heart, remove hope from man's heart. They all rejected him. But that day, Jesus was embracing him. Jesus said, Come down, Zacchaeus. Make a stand in your life. Come down from the sycamore tree. Leave your concepts, your understand, your thoughts. Leave your own resources behind. And come down. Your place, accused, not above, is down here. You're short, you should be in the bottom, right? The one who is humbled will be exalted. Do you remember that Zacchaeus went up in haste because Zacchaeus was, was in haste? You know what Jesus told him? Make haste and come down. Zacchaeus was in haste to go up the tree. Now he needed to come down in haste in order to meet with the Lord. Maybe today we, we, you were in haste to come here in this place. Because you wanted to see Jesus. But the invitation of Jesus is that you come down here. And in haste. Come down quick. Because today... Because today, I will stay at your house. My brothers, there was a multitude in that place. But God chose today. He chose to dwell in your house. To dwell in your life. The Lord chose today to inhabit, to reside with you. And salvation is this. It's a meeting with the Lord Jesus. 
It's a meeting with the Savior. Salvation is to receive Jesus in our house, receive Jesus in our life. My beloved, the Bible says that He came down quickly and He received and received Jesus not with anguish, sadness, with affliction, but received Jesus with joy. My beloved, you know what salvation is? Is to feel this great joy that the world does not know, that the multitude does, know, does not know, and that Jericho does not know, but the Lord is revealing to you, your and my life. He received it with joy. He received it with jubilation. He received it with praise and adoration, with glorification, because he knew that when he received Jesus, he would now receive his salvation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He received the jubilation, and the Lord said, Salvation has come to this house, because this is the son of Abraham. My, bro my brother, you are uh, uh, children of Abraham, you are children of the promise. Abraham has been justified by faith, and Abraham was believed, and he was given me as, as righteousness, because whoever believes in, in Jesus is now becomes children of Abraham, and you have been given the right to be called Son of God. That's how it's written. And tonight the Lord is giving you this power of being made children of God, children of Abraham, children of the promise. You have the right to an inheritance, an inheritance in heaven, a place in eternity. Tonight, tonight there is salvation in this house. Yes, you are the son of Abraham because the son of man came to rescue. Jesus came to rescue you. Jesus tonight came to meet with you, my brother and sister. He wants to tell you, receive me tonight in your house. Because I want to save you. Eu o maior milagre que existe, que é o milagre da salvação. E esse milagre eu quero operar na tua vida. Ele não curou Zaqueu, Zaqueu ele, de nenhum tipo de enfermidade. Mas ele foi ali para salvar Zaqueu. E nesta noite o Senhor está presente para te salvar, meu irmão, minha irmã. Para abençoar a sua vida, para agir naquilo que é impossível para você. O dom que o Senhor mostrava durante o louvor. Ele já estava operando aqui numa so operating uh, impossible healing that was taking place but our God this God that you serve is the God of the impossible because the Son of Man came to save seek and save Jesus didn't come only to seek but he came to save he scheduled a meeting in order to save you that's what he was doing at that moment in Jericho and that's why he's doing here tonight he brought you here, he took you from where you were, and he wants to give you salvation, to seek and save the ones who have been lost. He was lost, but now, when he met with Jesus, he was saved. He was found and he was saved. Jesus is a good shepherd. Remember the 100 sheep, when he went after the sheep? And when he met the lost sheep, he put uh, the sheep on his shoulders and he brought the sheep to his house. When we accept Jesus in our house and we uh, dwell with him and, and turn it with him, he came to save us, to bring you to this new heaven, this new eternity. Amen.
church will stand up. I'll praise him. I'll praise him. We're thankful because you are passing once again through this place to bring rest to our hearts, to manifest your power and your grace, to make us understand who you are, Lord. We praise you because your God uh, operates the impossible. We glorify your holy name, Lord, because it's impossible for us to be able to reach salvation. But through your grace, through your favor, through your great love, Lord, we are reached by this grace through Christ Jesus. And today, Lord, we'll live your eternity. We praise you. Glorify Lord, your holy name for each person who is here, the visitors, the ones who enter into your house tonight. And from this moment forward, we ask that you continue to inhabit and reside and live in the heart of each one of them so that throughout this week, you also may continue to operate salvation with uh, the remaining fam family members of those who are here. Take us home under your protection, we pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the good and eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, we with the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We want to thank you, the youth, you man and woman who is with us, you are welcome to this place. If you desire prayer for your life, a qualification of the word, remain where you are. Raise your hand so that we may give you the proper assistance. And from this moment forward, we would like to invite you to be with us more times. Every, I have service every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 o'clock and Saturdays at 6 of, in the afternoon um, women meeting. And uh, 7.30, another service of qualifications. And also on Sunday, 7.30. And, sun and 10.30 in the morning, Sunday schools. If you desire, uh, be with us here, participate with us. I'd like to remind the church that it begins the period of prayer for our neighbors. Amen. And early dawns. Amen.